What's up everybody? You probably weren't expecting to get a new video from me so soon, but I just got done making a special video that I wanted to let everybody know about. Remember when George came to Tucson to meet me at the car show from Australia and he gave me this hat for Track Day Club? Well, they're a car club in Australia, I've mentioned that before, and members of the club were on a race team for a car that just competed in the 2018 Bathurst 6-hour endurance race. And it's an improved production car race where you take production cars and put safety equipment in them and basically set them up to do an endurance race. And But for other than safety equipment and some basic upgrades, they are production cars. And they competed with a 2018 Holden VF Commodore SSV Redline. And they did so well and were so impressive throughout the weekend that I decided to make a highlight video of how they did in the race. So check this out. Good morning and welcome to Mount Panorama and a big happy Easter to everybody watching live around the world. Today might be April 1st, but this is absolutely no joke right here for an April Fool's Day. We are here for the 2018 high-tech bath, high-tech oils Bathurst 6 hour. And the first car in B2 is the SS Commodore of Crinolos, Villag and Howard. They were very, very strong in qualifying and miles in front of their nearest rival. Brett Howard was doing the job in qualifying in that car and did a 2.29 in a basically stock SS Commodore, which is an outstanding time around this place. And they were the first of every class for a lot of the weekend outside of the A1 extreme performance cars. So here we go, 56 cars, six hours in front of us at Mount Panorama. And BMW, which have won this race on two occasions, will lead the field to green for the third. Happy Easter, everybody. What a way to do it. Three wide, and the head goes the red line, the 69 Holden Commodore that Creelsey loves so much because he's got one as a street car. That's fine. That's what production racing's all about. You follow the car that you drive, or that you know your uncle, your dad, your cousin, whatever, drives. And that is why people love this type of racing so, so much. Back underway then with just under three hours and 40 minutes still to go. AMG, Tony Virag up to fourth place in the Class B2 Holden Commodore SSV Redline. That is a $60,000 road car and it's fourth outright in this race at the moment, which is an outstanding performance. And the first of our class leaders is still the B2 leader in the red line. That's Krilzy's car. He's going to be very excited by the 69 being uh, on top of that. Our Newton Park class leaderboards shows that car in the lead of class B2. Uh, Steve Vaughan, of course, leading A1. Chris Lillis in the other version of the Holden, the bigger engine car with the 6.3, the uh, HSV version of that car. That's the 64 leading A2. A couple of places further back, Brett Howard, who's leading B2 category with the red line uh, Commodore. Little fist pump from Creelsey alongside <laughs> me. Uh, he's just in a 2.34.6. 6 out right now. Yeah, it's an they've, they've awesome performance by them as this battle for the lead wage is on a better just now having to drive a little bit defensively in there. Jordan Cox is behind the wheel of car seven, he's in there. Tony Virag just behind him, the class B2 leader in that SS Commodore, which is just punched so far above its weight all weekend long. It's unbelievable. Tony Virag, uh, you've got one of the big cars out there, but it's still soldiering along all right. Yeah, the car felt really good. Um, we went out and missed our missed the uh, exiting for pit lane at the start of the race and put us to the back of the field. And uh, Joe drove the first session, done a remarkable job, brought the car back inside the top 20. Um, we then we done our pit stop, went back out there, and the car just felt great. I mean, the car was uh, never missed a beat. Really happy with it. How hard is it to manage the heat on the car, the engine, the tyres? Well, to, to manage the, the, the temp was pretty easy with a couple of safety cars out there. Um, the main the thing to do is to try and keep your head when you get to them safety cars and the restart. And uh, but overall, it's just uh, like I said, keeping your head. Here's something to gladden your heart, Creelsey, the B2 leader, 11th position. Tony Virag's just in that car, fastest lap of the race, 2:33.6. Are you happy with that? Yeah, they're punching out fast lap times at the end of this race. They want like a top it. ten now, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I think they you can see, see it. Yeah, they're, they're not, smelling a top ten. Not worried about the class leaderboard. 11th position for Tony Virag in the 69 car, the red, white and black Holden Commodore. The 6 litre red line, the VF shaped car. It's cost Berwick a little bit of time because he was right on the rear bumper bar of the Sharon car, but it's now cost them. 
as they work their way past, finally work their way past the Tony Verag driven B2 leading Commodore. They're 11th outright. I know we keep talking about this, but that car on paper shouldn't be that far up the field. They are doing an outstanding job, and all three drivers very evenly matched. And the next B2 car is... I, I can't see it. It's back in the Blue Mountain somewhere. Yeah. It's that far back. I think it's, it's not Richard, in the top 40 for sure. Richard I don't think. Bloomfield in 43rd. There you go. Thank you. And rounding out the top 10, the giant killing car. One of the great stories of the day, had it not been for that incredible finish to the race we saw, but it was Brett Howard behind the wheel uh, of the car he was sharing with uh, Tony Veriag and Joe Crinolos. The B2 class Holden VF SS Commodore. Bit of a swan song for Aussie muscle in recent times, but. That car finished 10th outright and first in Class B2 and a considerable margin in front of their rivals.